Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So there's no machining in this video for my regular viewers. Uh, this is geared toward the boating community. Um, mainly guys with older boats that are running the, the older style of Volvo AQ outdrive or stern drive. Um, I've shown rebuilding these before. So this is the upper gear unit. And here's, I'll, I'll, I'll put up a, an image of where this actually goes on, on the outdrive. Okay, so yeah, so I've, I've just completely re, uh, tore down, rebuilt, serviced this unit. Um, but I went into detail uh, on the U-joints because I haven't shown that before. Uh, they're not that easy to do um, as compared to like doing automotive U-joints or what have you. There's quite a bit more involved. So um, that's what this video is going to be all about. And hopefully that will help somebody that needs to service theirs or just give you a general idea of what's involved in doing it. Okay, and one last thing before we dive into it. Um, you could actually remove this entire gearbox assembly without removing the outdrive, stern drive unit from the boat. Um, big time saver to do it that way. I've got instructions on how to do that. So um, if you want that, I can email them to you. So I'll, I'll put my email down here someplace. Just shoot me an email and I'll send it to you. It's just in a Word document format. Uh, yeah, it makes it a whole lot easier. Okay, well, uh, let's, uh, let's go dive into it. Working on a 290A upper transmission gearbox. <laughs> These U-joints are toast. <laughs> All right, that's the main issue with this one so far. Everything else is looking okay as we go. Already removed our bolts, and they were pretty tight. So now I'm just using a plastic dead blow hammer just to coax the uh, clamp ring out of the housing. These can be pretty tight. This one's no exception. Just take your time, work your way around. Sometimes you got to warm them up a little bit. And we may end up doing that. Okay, yeah, that wasn't so bad. Uh, Warmed it up to about maybe 85, 90 degrees Fahrenheit. It's winter time, so it's a little, a little cooler today. Yeah, it just, hit, it just helps soften up the gasket sealer that was on the O-ring. And a couple taps and, you know, wiggling it and so forth. I've got to clamp this in the vise for the next operation, so I've just been scraping off some of this grease and rust buildup give it half a chance of uh, not torquing itself out of the vise once we clamp it in there. Okay, we're clamped in the vise. Next we gotta take out this uh, pinion gear retaining bolt. And that bolt is in there with thread locker. So what you gotta do is, is gently warm up the bolt and the gear. Don't overdo it. Only need to get it up to maybe 150 degrees Fahrenheit, maybe just a little more, just to soften up that thread locker. Just take your time. Give that heat some time to soak in. Don't rush it, just uh, be patient. Do not overheat it. Just be patient. Take your time. Let that heat soak in. There we go. Yeah, you can see the that thread locker that was on there. Okay, while it's still warm, use a brass punch. You see, you got to tap the uh, <clears throat> U-joint assembly out. She's being stubborn. I'm going to go put it in the press, and we'll just press that out. It's got a piece of uh, heavy copper pipe. 
this should work nicely. Now they're usually not this tight. There's an O-ring that goes between the U-joint yoke and this and the seal sleeve, the seal sleeve. O-ring looks pretty good. And I can tell this this has been holding water tight because obviously there's no rust on the uh, inboard side. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside for right now. Okay, now I want to be really careful that I don't get any dirt down into the bearings because our bearing is right there. Okay. Now one thing that I already checked is these pinion bearings feel really good. I mean they're you can't you can't feel anything, okay? That's that's nice. And they're the ones that usually go out first if you have a bearing failure. Okay, so we wanna we don't want to get any dirt in those bearings. If we do, we'll have to take it all the way apart, clean it, and put it back together. Okay, let me get you in here so you can see inside. Alright, this is our bearing sleeve. It, it'll lift right out of there, but I'm going to leave it in for right now because it's, it's helping to protect the dirt from getting in on our bearing. We've got a big snap ring in here to take out so that we can get the seal out. So we're going to do that snap ring next. Okay guys, I've been carefully cleaning this housing. And you want to get all the cleaning done while the seal is still in there. Because it's protecting the bearing from any dirt getting into the bearing. Okay, so um, your, uh, <laughs> your main tools are going to be dental tools. Scrape all that stuff out. Um, be sure to get in here and clean the splines because the uh, there's always some Loctite that gets down there in those splines. You want to want to scrape all that out. I also uh, took our O-ring out and our shims. Okay, just be real careful with these shims. Uh, if you have a thick one and a thin one, then that's the case here. Always put the thin one against the housing when you put it back together. That way the thick one will kind of protect that thinner shim. Shims go on first and the o-ring. I cleaned the o-ring groove. I didn't over clean it because I don't want to score it. And the uh, tool I'm using has a rounded tip so it's, uh, it doesn't dig into the aluminum. Okay. And the other thing you want to be sure to do, take a 3 8 drill bit and, and go through all these bolt holes and make sure, you know, kind of wiggle it around make sure that you've got all the corrosion out these things can really get bad this one's not too bad um, now there is some damage here we've got corrosion here it's eaten through this bolt hole the countersink and this one here uh, there's still some surface in here for sealing not that not the greatest I'm gonna get some, take some emery and, and uh, smooth this out the best I can and I'll do a little touch-up paint on that yeah, okay. So, back to the seal, okay. It's not an easy seal to change. This one is not leaking. There's no evidence of any oil coming out, and I don't really see any evidence of water going in. So this, you might be better off in that case just leaving the seal as is, okay. I'm going to change this one because I have everything to do it. Uh, they're not easy to do. Um, I'll try doing it with the um, with the shaft in place. <clears throat> we'll see. We'll see how successful we are. But uh, I'm probably going to tear this all the way down just to just to you know give it a good cleaning and see maybe see if I can fix up some of this stuff on the uh, on the clamp ring. I've been very careful not to get any dirt in the bearings, and they still feel silky smooth. There's no roughness. No crunchy crunch. If if that happens, 
um, you're pretty much committed to tear it all the way down, which means you got to press this apart. You're going to need some adapters uh, in order to do that. It gets more complicated. Um, now, one other thing is, according to the book, you're supposed to tear it all the way down. Um, there's a crush sleeve between the two bearings that they say if you if you take this apart or even just the U-joint assembly out, you're, you're supposed to replace that crush sleeve, okay? Um, and I get it, <laughs> okay? But, okay, real world scenario here, okay? So that crush sleeve works in conjunction with the preload of the bearings, okay? Now, these bearings have worn in a little bit, which means they could use a little more preload. It, could withstand being tightened just a little bit more, okay? And the other thing is those, that crush sleeve, when you back off the bolt, it's gonna expand a little bit, you know, a few thousandths. So as long as you don't over tighten and you're real careful and, and, and checking your, your preload tension when you're going back together, in my opinion, <laughs> You don't need to do it, okay? You can just you can just put it back together. So you know, do yours the way you want to do yours. If you're going by the book, you got to replace that crush sleeve. Okay, I'll try not to block the camera. You're going to need a really good pair of snap ring, heavy duty snap ring pliers, and a couple of small screwdrivers to help you coax the snap ring out of the groove here. Make sure you got safety glasses on. This snap ring is no joke if it takes off on you. Yep, see? <laughs> That's why you want to make sure you got your safety glasses on. Okay, and then take a minute to clean around the seal, clean the snap ring groove. It'll make life a lot easier. Plus, you don't want it going in the bearing. Next, we've got to remove the sealing ring, or actually, I think they call it a shoulder washer. And there's enough of an edge there, you can just catch it with a screwdriver and carefully tap it out. Don't overdo it. You don't want to, don't want to nick anything up. There we go. And you want to inspect this for wear. Okay. <laughs> This has got a lot of wear. There's a pretty deep groove in there. So I'll probably be replacing this. Yeah. Let me clean that up a little bit. I'll show you. Alright, I just tried to clean this in some solvent. So I, it initially looked like it was a just a grease and dirt buildup, but it's actually it's actually rust and it's and it's swollen up. And we've also got a pretty good groove into the uh, into the seal surface so yeah we're going to replace this all right you're not going to get in here with a regular seal pulling tool but you could use like a brake spoon let's give this a try these seals are usually in there pretty tight There you go. All right, we got some gunk on the bearing. Let me uh, flip this over and flush it out. Okay, well that was a fail. So some of that debris got in the bearing and I can tell, in fact, you can, you can even see it. So I don't want to force that. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way apart. We'll press the, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take it all the way apart press the pinion gear out and that way we can flush out the bearings and do it the way you're supposed to do it yeah pretty much have to take these all the way apart well you think it looks bad now I've actually cleaned it quite a bit I got all the uh, internal uh, keepers off that was a job let me tell you so I'm going to soak this some more and penetrate 
and clean it up a little bit more before we attempt to get these uh, old U-joints out. All right, let me show you something. <clears throat> you want to be careful when you're pressing out these U-joints, especially when, when they're really rusted in like these are. Okay, watch, watch this um, top of this yoke here. Can you guys see it bending? Okay, these are not very strong and it's really easy to spring these. And if, once you spring them, it's real hard to get them back into their original position. So let me show you a trick. Get yourself a piece of scrap metal and you'll, you'll, you'll have to get it to the perfect length, but it's not hard. And I put a slight taper on one side so that it's easier to get it in there. There we go. Yeah, just wedge it in between the ears like that, okay? And then set it up in the press, okay? Whether it be your hydraulic press, arbor press, uh, screw press, what have you, okay? That'll, that'll prevent you from bending these ears on, on the yokes. Once you get them moving, then you can take that back out. This type of press actually works pretty good. Um, Normally I'll do these over in the arbor press where we just were, but there's no way these are going to budge in that arbor press. It's going to take a lot more force. So if you get one of these, you gotta you gotta grind out some clearance to give you you know clearance around this uh, this ring here. All right. So what I like to do is set it up here on the bench, and then I'll put the whole thing in the vise or where it's held, where you can get both hands and work on it. Okay, we're set up. You can see we got our wedge block in there. Believe it or not, it's moving. There we go. Yeah, you'll, it'll usually pop like that. That's pretty common. And then just make sure that you're that you're not sitting on the edge of the cup, that it's actually got clearance to move through. All right. I soaked this overnight with penetrant, so I think that helped. I think that's as far as it's gonna go that way. Okay. Now what you gotta do to back and frame here. There's not enough clearance in these yolks to push it all the way out. So what you do, I'm going to go over to the big vise. I'm going to clamp this in the big vise. You could use uh, vise grips, I guess, um, and then just wrench it out of there. Okay. Okay, we got that one out. Now we're going to put it back in the press and press it back the other direction. And I'll probably squirt some penetrant on there just to help it. Okay, I got it turned around, ready to press it back through the other way. The other thing I didn't mention, this one is so crusty that it, I don't think there's any benefit. But normally I'll, I'll go ahead and, and put some punch marks so that I can get all the yolks back in their original position. Just in case there's any balance issues. Um, but <laughs> so much is rusted off of this that psh, it's not going to matter. There we go. And again, I'm just going to go clamp this in the big vise and just wrench it out of there. Okay. Had to use a little Gorilla Force, but I got that cap out of there. So look how tight they make these. You just barely got enough room to get that yolk or, or U-joint out of there. Okay, so rinse and repeat four more times. I'm going to do all that off camera unless something weird happens. Continuing on. I'm using the wedge block in these also. This uh, this last one was really tight. If I hadn't had that block in there, it would have definitely bent the uh, the ears. Oh boy! There we go. Every time it pops, you got to put your block back in. All 
on a normal U joint, there's usually enough room where you can just you know work it through there. But on these, they're so tight that your only choice is to press it back through and pull it out from the other side. So success, we got it all broken down, and it's salvageable. It's going to be okay. I'm going to throw these yolks in the hot tank. Let them uh, cook probably overnight. Get them all cleaned up. Yeah, these are some pretty uh, pretty nasty U joints, and I don't know you know why they let it get so bad this is a salvage unit that I'm doing for a buddy he bought it from somebody um, so I don't know what they did <laughs> I mean, obviously they had to had to have known that something was going on right yeah but remember this block trick otherwise you can bend these ears okay let me get these cleaned up so what would happen if a dealer was servicing a boat with u-joints in this condition there's no way they're going to touch this. They're just going to tell you that it's, it's, it's toast. Um, you've got to put in a whole new U-joint assembly. And they're about $1,000. Okay. So just to let you know. Okay. This particular yoke setup uses the uh, internal snap rings or clips. These are actually U.S. made. Try to avoid the offshore stuff. And... This is their number, but it's a Spicer uh, 1306. In this case, the internal clips. They do make both kinds of yolks because they use different vendors. So just uh, you know, be sure to match up what you got. The um, the grease in these, I don't like it. I'm going to uh, clean these out and replace the grease with um, with a good quality um, synthetic, preferably marine grease. All right, so check this out. I know I just showed this a minute ago, but they they ship these U joints essentially dry. I mean, there's nothing in the cross holes at all. So this one here, there we go. We got our new synthetic grease in there. It's completely full, so much better. I like to angle the grease fitting or point it toward the inside yoke. I think it's a little easier, you know, because you can. When it's articulated, you can get your grease gun in there. Although no one's probably ever going to grease these. I mean, because the time you pull the boot back, it's just too much work for most people. So I always make sure I get them packed good ahead of time. And that way, uh, hopefully it'll last uh, you know, as long as possible. Okay, guys. Well, here's another. This is actually a fairly common problem. So... That yoke right there is out of spec. It's not tight enough. And I'm gonna I'm going around, I'm checking them all. So far I found two that are that are loose. Okay, that one's good. That one feels okay. That one's loose. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark these so I know which ones they are. And then I'll come in with a center punch and just dimple, lightly dimple the inside of that surface. And then I'll also use some thread locker. Um, shaft locker would be better or shaft retaining compound, but I'm just going to use uh, blue Loctite. That'll work when I put the, and I'll make sure that's dry when I put it together. It's a, uh, yeah, that's no good. Okay. That's actually pretty common. I find this a lot. <clears throat> and I was real careful. I didn't didn't use any uh, emery cloth or anything on the inside of these bores. Just a quick wipe with some Scotch Brite is all I did because I knew that this could be a problem. Okay, so yeah, definitely don't don't be don't be uh, sanding the inside of these because they're they're generally too loose. This is the one that's going to get some Loctite thread locker. Little at a 
time. Looks like we're there. I'm going to grab a couple of the E clips or C clips and uh, check the fit. Okay, I put one C clip on this side. It's still got a slight gap, so we need to go down a little bit more that direction. Perfect. Okay, good. If it's tight, you may have to knock. Oops, <laughs> get you. Okay, I got the other C-clip in. If it's if if your U-joint is tight, you may be putting pressure on one of the caps, and you may have to tap the entire joint one way or the other. It should it should not be uh, uh, binding. Okay. All right. Okay, hey, now's when you need multiple hands. <laughs> okay, so first you got to get this guy in here. Okay. Get this one started. Get your U joint started in. And I'm just going to press it down just a little bit just to get it started. Sure, your needle bearings are all in place. Okay. I like to go a little at a time. Things still moving? Okay. All right, I'm going to put in one of our C clips. Okay, I got. I'll show you. I got this C clip in. Okay, and then I didn't really show this plate. So this plate allows the press to only press on the yoke and not the uh, E joint cap. Okay. Just go slow, you don't want to go too far and, and put it under tension. Still moving. There we go. Okay, and just kind of give it a visual. Looks like we're centered, equal spacing, not tight on either one. We've got good movement. Okay, one half done. Now we just got to do the other half. I'll do that half off camera. Okay, this one is a little tight. There's actually a speck on the end clearance on U-joints. I, I think it's a thousandth of an inch per side. So I know I got to adjust this. So I went in here with the feeler gauge. I can get a three thousandths feeler gauge between our snap ring or, or C-clip and the and the groove where on this side it's tight I can't get it in there so I I need to just tap this a little bit that direction I brought our block over because I I want that the end of that um, cap to be floating free and we'll check it that's it I'm gonna give it one last little tap on this side just for good measure Okay, much better. Oh, by the way, they do make different thickness of these uh, C-clips. Um, and I've even had to put them on the belt sander and <laughs> take a little off. Um, especially if these yokes get sprung when I showed the disassembly process. If you don't put that brace in there, it's easy for these to get sprung. So just, you know, another thing to keep in mind. Okay, done. Now there's one of these caps, I don't remember which one it was, but it was really tight and I actually had to use our little brace block. I had to come in and put our block behind here. I didn't want to didn't want to take the chance of springing one of these ears. Okay. Now I did have one screw up. I got the grease fitting pointing the wrong way. <laughs> 
but luckily this is the the engine side and there's more room on that side so I think it'll be fine okay but anyways feels really good that's ready to go back in I still got to rebuild rebuild the rest of the gear and I've got another video on that so I probably won't film any of that but I I'll try to film uh, tightening and setting the uh, the preload I need to re-expand this crush sleeve and I've been measuring it so we're averaging between 0.568 and 0.57 so you only need to expand it just a few thousands probably three thousandths three to three to five thousandths will do it so I'm gonna go do that Here's the way I do that. I put a piece of round stock in the vise and then just, you know, work my way around. Tap, 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 tap. Takes a fair amount of tapping to, uh, to get, get it to expand. Okay, we're looking good. You'll never get it even all the way around. And these do spring back also when you, when you take it apart, so. Yeah. Better to put a new one in, but um, if you're careful, you can reuse them. We're going to put our new seal in next. And this is not a bad kit from uh, GLM. Um, there are a few issues with it, but uh, they give you a new seal. This is not the seal that came in this kit. Uh, it was already robbed for a different project, but uh, they do give you... A new seal washer and we're replacing ours for obvious reasons okay um, but uh, I did have to do some deburring on this on the seal washer so you know keep that in mind I've already greased it up I put the provided o-ring in so it's ready to go when we get to that part and then for this um, seal you want to put a little bit of waterproof grease um, on the bore and a little bit on the seal. These fit really tight. If you try to put it in dry, you're going to have problems. Okay, your outboard bearing needs to go in before you put the seal in. I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the race, a little bit of oil on the bearing, and I did clean this bearing really good. All right, that drops in. Make sure it feels good, nothing, no grit. Goes that way, that way goes down. I like to start it with a seal driver. And they never go straight. So then I just take a big socket so I can see what I'm doing and concentrate the force on the side that's high. Okay, I'm going to try the snap ring. You can always tap it down a little more. And I've also greased up the snap ring, mainly so it doesn't rust. And I like to put the, the gap toward this ear, okay? Since that's the, uh, the bottom when it's installed, if any water is sitting in that snap ring groove, it's, it's got a way to dra drain out. Okay, that's in. Oh, this is a grease I like to use, by the way. I've had really good luck with it. All right, so now when we took this apart, we used this sleeve to set the assembly in so that we could press the um, pinion gear out, okay? And we used this adapter to do that, okay? Let me give you, you're gonna need to make one of these or have, have one made. The, uh, here's the critical dimensions. Outside is roughly 1.362, 1.362 inches. Inside, and you got a little bit of leeway on this. Inside is 1.026 inches, 1.026 inches. Okay, and that was for getting it apart. Okay, now to go back together, we don't need this, but we do need, 
when this is in there, okay, it's going to sit in here like this. We need to support the, this pinion gear. So I use this little block that I made up, okay. Now I know guys do just take a, a plate of aluminum and do it that way, but I like supporting it right on the face of the gear. I think it's a little safer. This dimension, oh, this, this little nose part, roughly three quarters, uh, actually no, more, roughly seven eighths, uh, 0 0.876, 0 0.876 of an inch. And then the outside, uh, 1.978, give or take a little, 1.978. Okay, and then you need one more critical sleeve for pressing this in. So when you go to press the bearing in, you need a you need a sleeve that will fit over this shaft and engage the inner race of the bearing. So this one, the OD, 1.763, 1.763. And you know that can vary a little bit. The ID one point four one nine, call it one point four two zero would be close enough. Here's how this sleeve so it fits through the seal and engages with the bearing. Okay. So we're gonna take this. And this all out to the press and press that together. Okay, and do not forget <laughs> your crest sleeve. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit of light oil here on the bearings. These are all cleaned. And I put a little bit on the shaft also just to help that press fit go in easier. And we'll put some on our bearing cup. Um, do not put this washer in yet because obviously you can't do it with that in there. And when we press this together, okay, this is critical and, and I'm not sure if I'm going to film it or not, but you, you only go until you make contact and until there's no, no rock or play because the preload we're going to set over in the vise when we put the U-joints uh, back in. This is a pretty light press fit. You could probably do this in an arbor press. Okay, now we gotta start being careful. Back off a little bit here. How much play we have? Yeah, we still got play. So we got to get rid of that play without over tightening or over pressing, I should say. Okay, let's check it again. Come up a little higher. We're real close. This is where you got to be real careful. Okay, I still got a little bit of play. Okay, let's see how that feels. Idea is to get it, <clears throat> get rid of all the play, but don't don't put any preload on it. Okay, I think we're there. Let's just see. Okay, there's no play at all. 
and we have almost no drag, so we're just making contact. Okay, I'm gonna go just a smidge more. Although I don't recommend doing that. Okay. I just went till I felt just a little increase in drag. Okay? We're stopping right there. So now we're gonna do the rest when we draw it together with the bolt. Okay. We're back from the press. So we've got no play, but we've also got no, we've got no preload, it spins freely. Okay, so the next step is put in our seal washer. I'm going to put a little more grease on there. The O-ring goes out, like so. Going to put a little oil on our spline. Okay, your joint assembly goes back in. There we go. It's a little tight. Okay. Make sure everything's still free. All right, looks good. Okay, now we gotta head to the vise. You want to make sure you've got everything set up in advance for this next step. So we've got our blue thread locker, we've got our wrench ready to go, we've got a scale ready to go, we've got our pull string around the unit so that we can get a feel on the bearing preload. Okay, so and we left a little gap so that the uh, the clamp ring bearing box assembly has room to turn, okay? Um, always keep this bolt in <laughs> when you're moving this around. Uh, it's real easy for the U-joints just to fall out. <laughs> Ask me how I know, <laughs> okay? Um, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put you on the tripod. We're gonna take this bolt back out. We're gonna uh, coat it liberally with our thread locker. We're going to snug it up a little bit and we're going to keep checking our preload until we get it where we want it. It's between 500 and 1,000 grams or about between one and about two and a quarter pounds. And these threads are nice and clean, by the way. I do have a little bit of grease on the under the head of the bolt so that it doesn't have any friction when tightening. Okay, nice coating of thread locker. This stuff sets pretty fast, so you once you get started with this, you gotta go. You just give it an initial snugging for scale. Oop. Come on, hook, stay on there. There we go. You wanna wiggle it a little bit to get rid of the breakaway friction. Okay, we we're right at a thousand kilograms. So we're, we're pretty much there. Just check it. Let's see if that increased it any. This scale is, we're at the bottom range of this scale, so. I'm thinking we could probably go just a little bit more. Okay, I'm gonna go just a hair more. We're up 1.15 kilograms. And that feels good to me, I like that. Okay. Okay, next we wanna put our shims back on. And we have a thin shim and a thick shim. Always put your thicker shim to the outside to help protect the thinner one. And these can be a little tight sometimes to get on there. Oh, these were no problem. Then we got our O-ring. 
which we want to grease up really good. Okay, so the um, the service manual calls for Permatex on on the mating surfaces. I just use grease. Um, it's always worked good for me. Um, if you want to use Permatex, go right ahead. I don't think it's necessary in my opinion. It's a brand new O-ring out of our kit. And I put a little grease on our machine surface here to help it slide into the housing. Okay. And a little bit on the on the shim. And you'll put a little bit, you'll put some grease on the inside of the gear case housing and on the face when you get ready to put this in. So you're ready to go back in. I've, I've got more to do on the gear case um, part of this. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to put this back in the bag so it's ready to go. Uh, one note on your bolts, when you, when you go to put your bolts in, make sure you coat the entire bolt liberally with, uh, with anti-seize, especially the shank. That's where they end up freezing. Uh, they'll get corroded to the uh, to the aluminum body. So do the whole thing with anti-seize. Okay, that's pretty much it for just doing U-joints. Yeah, just common sense stuff. Make sure your you know your gears are meshing when you're going back together because you got two gears. You got a forward and reverse, upper and lower. Make sure you got them both engaged. You know, make sure you wiggle everything around as you're going back together. If something binds up, don't force it. You know, step back and and see what's going on. There is quite a bit of tension on this O-ring. When you get to that, it usually takes a little bit of force, um, but you should be able to push it all the way in by hand. And then this is a very tight fit around the machine surface, so it can bind on you when you're when you're putting it into the housing. So just uh, just finesse it, don't force it. Okay, that's pretty much all there is to doing the U-joints. <laughs> well, it's, it's, a, it's a job, but uh, that, that's the U-joint procedure. And like I say, I got more to do on the rest of the gear case, so I'm just gonna put this in a bag until I'm ready for it.